Hi, I'm Jacqueline Mullen, and you are tuned into my YouTube channel. And today I have a very, very, very special guest, a dear friend of mine, someone I met through social media, mm -hmm. Lori B. Style, Lori Brucker. Hi. <laughs> so, Lori, thanks for um, offering to share your insights, your advice, your awesome personality. Thank you. We're going to get right into it. Absolutely. So, let's do this. Lori B. Style, tell us a little bit about your business. Okay, well, my company is Lori B. Style, LoriBStyle.com. You can find me online there and see all of this about me. I am a personal stylist and image consultant based in Los Angeles, but I coach women all over the country. So I help women discover their own unique style with their wardrobe and it has everything to do with the building their confidence and finding what's right for their body type. Every style is unique. Every woman is unique. So I really try to enhance our own individual beauties through wardrobes that we live confidently every day. Now, you, you touched upon something that I want to kind of bring up because yeah. I definitely think as women we all have a unique style and unique mm -hmm. personalities and stuff, but I will say one thing that I think we all have in common is this self-doubt sometimes or this, this mm -hmm. lack of confidence and even the most, even the people that you see out in the public eye yeah. or that are writing books and speaking, if they're women, more often than not, there's some sort of like confidence issue that they may be challenged with. So. Yeah. You know, in your line of work, you're an expert with regard to at least trying to like work on that on a daily yeah. basis. So, how do you suggest, or what can we do to kind of combat that that confidence issue, that confidence challenge? That is a that's a great question, and I am also a part of that statistic. I think that every single woman, including myself and the ones that I've worked with, you know, we all wish we had something different about our bodies. We just are not that happy with something. And so typically what we do instead of, you know, working with it, we choose to hide it. We cover it in fabrics. We wear black over it. And we're actually showing off that we are insecure about that one area of our body because we're wardrobing it insecurely. So what I like to recommend is stand in front of your mirror, get naked. And go take a look at your body because every single body is completely different. Yes, there's basic body shapes you can fit into, but we all have different bodies and they're all imperfect. But no one is perfect. And so uh, we're perfectly imperfect, you know? And so if you look at yourself in the mirror, look at your body and say, you know what? I do have to carry a little bit more on the bottom half or I do carry a little bit more on the top half. Whatever that is for you acknowledge it and accept it because the truth is once you accept it that's when you can educate yourselves on how to style it so that you can create balance you can you know hide and distract from and draw the attention in other ways so there's ways to work with your unique body shape to enhance what you love distract from what you don't love and draw the attention away and up into your face which is of course why I love a great statement necklace Right up there. Yeah, and your necklace makes some noise. So let's shimmy a little bit. When you shimmy, your necklace. I know, right? <laughs> I love it. I gotta make a, you know, I gotta make a splash every time I walk into a room. At least, gotta turn some heads I with love style, it. I love it. with jingle, own the, room. own the room. And when you feel great in your wardrobe, when you feel good with your body, more importantly than the actual clothes, like that radiates through your clothes. That's what turns heads in a room. That's a really important distinction to make, and I will say another thing too is I think perhaps a lot of where our confidence challenges come up are that we're we're looking at our bodies or our businesses or yeah. our bank accounts versus somebody else's, and really boils back down to self love. And I, mm -hmm. I share with a lot of women in business and even girlfriends of mine, our inner critic can be so harsh sometimes. And I'm like, if you had a significant other or a boss or a boyfriend that judged you and spoke to you and criticized you the way that they did, <laughs> there would be no relationship you would walk out from the job. And yeah. yeah, so I think that's a really cool thing to point out that sometimes it's not the clothes that we're wearing that necessarily mm -hmm. give us that confidence. It's, you know, our body shapes and loving it. ourselves. And that's a, not an easy thing to do. It's way easier said than done because the truth is you do have to wake up in the morning you look in the mirror every morning and you look at yourself and that conversation you have with yourself first thing in the morning is the most important thing that you could do. You either are looking like, I look in the mirror and I'm like, oh, I'm starting to notice some lines. Why do I have wrinkles here? What is this over here? I'm like starting I'm so to- so guilty of that. I know, and then I open up my closet because I'm like, meh, I'm so cranky about that. And then I go, I'm like, ugh, I hate what I'm wearing today. And I just pull out some outfit and I wear black uh, <laughs> and I hide from what, you know, I'm hiding. And so, Imagine like opening, you know, getting getting up in the morning, going to the mirror, and instead of focusing in all that, just being like, 
you know what, I look great today, or I feel pretty today, or I have such beautiful eyes, or I don't really love my face today, but I've got a great ass. Like, whatever that is for you. Oh, yeah. Booty. Um, whatever that is for you. I mean, it's different for everybody. So whatever resonates for you. In doing that exercise with yourself, it will help you, like, if you give yourself love in the morning, when you open up your closet doors, you might actually feel better about what you're putting on that day. And again, it's the confidence that comes from within that radiates out, and that is the style. That's style to me. Love that. And that yeah. kind of opens up a really great transition for the next thing that we're going to talk about, yeah. which is working with a stylist, which mm -hmm. is going into your closet and how so many of us women feel like we have this closet full of clothes, mm -hmm. but we walk up to the closet and we're like, I don't want this, I don't <laughs> want this, I don't want this, this looks like crap. So then the question becomes, you know, in Los Angeles, it's pretty common for people mm -hmm. to know of stylists or even in New York, like mm -hmm. major metropolitan cities. But for the woman who is perhaps in the Midwest, or, and I'm not generalizing, but for the woman who doesn't matter where she is, says, yeah. I can't have a stylist tell me because I'm not a celebrity, I'm not yeah. whatever. What do you say about, what do you, how do you, how do you, you know, answer that? Well, I think that it's um, it's very common to feel like, oh, a stylist is something that is a luxury. But I, I believe, and this is where I, I personally am working to kind of uh, strip that uh, ideal from everyone's minds and tell everybody that style is for everyone because style is not about wearing high-end clothes and the most expensive pieces and being all in fashion and wearing something that you saw at a Vogue like that's not fat that's not style to me that what style for the real woman is how you feel in your clothes and finding clothes that are right for your body type right for your life right for your lifestyle and are functional for you and also make you feel great so that is something that every woman deserves to have, especially entrepreneurs. Um, you represent your business, you know, oh, yeah. uh, what is your visual of your business? You are that person to be the representation. And um, what is your wardrobe and how you express yourself say about you and your company? And I think that that's a really important aspect to every woman deserves to work with a stylist, you know, and I think that whether it's doing Skype sessions online that you can be coached into working with your clients and understanding your own body type or even hiring someone in your own city or in Los Angeles or flying me out whatever you guys want I'm available jet setting why not totally um, I could do that really but <laughs> but the truth is like you you deserve to have this and how can you not give this to yourself we as women are like poised to take over the world right now so let's get dressed accordingly well, another, I think. another thing that you have shared with me in the past that I love is like the whole karma thing. So what's like oh, the yeah. karma thing? Because it's a very special time for women, women right now yeah. as well. Um, it's a collaborative time for women, and not to say that you know women we have a reputation, you know, for being a little bit more competitive mm -hmm. or catty, and I really think that's changing. It's it's changing a lot. So tell us a little bit about this, like karma. Well, I've discovered in my own personal life. When I li I used to live in New York City for seven years, and I was a fashion designer before I quit the corporate world and started my own business. And I would walk down the street every day to work, and I would look at girls in their outfits, and I in my head would be like. I really love what she's wearing. Oh, I kind of want that, you know? And like, you would say these things to yourself in your head, and I'm, I'm really actually saying nice things like about the person I'm looking at. I'm like, I really like that. That's really cool, like I admire that. And so I'm looking at other girls looking at me, and I was wondering at some point, are they thinking nice things about me? Probably, because I'm thinking nice things about other people. Why would I just assume? it would be negative. Now most of us see someone looking at us and we assume they're like, what's wrong? Like, right. what are they looking at? Is it not good? You know? Lack of confidence, lack yeah, of confidence. Yeah, exactly. And I, I did go through that, but I, I started changing my mindset. So I made this point to, every time I walk down the street or anywhere, and a networking meeting is a great way to meet people too, um, when I see something I love, I always stop the person and compliment them. If I love like a necklace, a blouse, I'm like, I love this color on you. It's so great for your skin tone. I always would, <laughs> like that. you know, it's something that is genuine. I genuinely mean it. I only do it when it's genuine. I don't, you know, do it fakely. I really mean it because then the person you compliment feels fantastic because they're like, oh my God, the stranger complimented me. And by you making them feel good, you feel good. So now we've got two separate people feeling great. Now they're walking a little bit straighter, feeling a little bit better. And they're more apt to compliment someone else, but you also get that in return, and that's the karma from like putting out that good energy. People will then start complimenting you. You'll see that when you compliment people, it comes back tenfold in your own outfits, which makes you feel better, makes you stand up taller, makes your energy radiate, and that's a part of great style. I love it. So, you know, give the compliment, 
when you genuinely mean it and it'll come back to you and that's the karma clause and that's us helping women support women to be our best selves every day it's beautiful karma clause karma clause right, from you first <laughs> so speaking of paying it forward mm -hmm. you know there's a lot of young women who aspire mm -hmm. to be a stylist and you know build a career path and trajectory so what's one piece of advice i mean you're almost four or five years into your mm -hmm. business now Looking back, I wish I would have known then what I know now. What would that piece of advice be? Um, actually, I have, I have two pieces of advice here. One, in the styling industry, there's a lot of facets of the styling world. Good so point. as a personal stylist, I work in closets. I work one-on-one -on -one with clients. I clean out their closets. I take them shopping. I help them style with what they own. That's what I do. There's also stylists that do editorial styling or red carpet stylists or you know event stylists. So there's a lot of, and even bridal stylist which is a, a cool new industry if you like the bridal world um, you know that's so I would figure out exactly which one you love try them all and then decide what you love and that's what I did I did actually try all those things and then wow. realized that working with real women was so rewarding to watch them really grow and change in their lives and achieve their dreams and go for it every day and I love that you know style was really that um, working with them and all the style that we put together really like affected their lives um, so that was for me, but you know, five years into it, um, what I wish I could have told myself back in the day, back in the day, yeah, like, five yeah, years. I know, I thought that. <laughs> Back in the day, not the young not a kid, kid anymore. anymore. <laughs> um, I think I went to my high school. Told you we had fun. You were part of your fun. Um, voila. Okay. Um, so uh, the other thing would be that it takes time to build a business. Now, two years into my building a business, I was like, I have to have this done and this and this and this and why is it not here? And I was literally a army sergeant on myself trying to unrealistically make magic happen when the truth is... Building a business takes so much time. It takes a lot of love, it takes a lot of hard work, a lot of dedication, but even in working so hard every single day, a lot of times you don't see that instantaneous output immediately. So uh, five years later, I've made it past that hump, but I wish that I didn't torture myself so much in those first couple years because I was expecting to be there already. Um, it just doesn't always come that way. And I think that uh, you just have to stay as determined as possible, love what you're doing as much as you can, put all your love into it and really enjoy every second because it's a beautiful thing as you do it and you forget to take a moment to be like, wow, I did all that. And I still have to stop myself and be like, Lori, look what you did. This is great. And I'm like, why am I not here? Why did I not do this? I mean, I just did that yesterday. <laughs> that's common though. So it's common. that's the whole point that, you know, that's yeah. why we're making these videos to show you that, you know, whether you're starting out, whether you're five years in, whether you're 10 or 15 years yeah. in, this is the human condition, you know, <laughs> especially more than likely you launched a business because you are driven, you are a visionary, you have dreams. You. So you hold yourself to a higher standard. So it's totally common. And yeah. we've even heard from professional women who are in their seven figure league that mm -hmm. their overnight success took them 10 years. So... I appreciate yes. that. Have patience. I mean, you yeah. wouldn't go and water something, right? Like, you wouldn't plant a seed and water it and put sun on it and the next day walk out and say, I haven't you grown yet. So, yeah. it's a very similar concept. Which, I'd like to work with plants because I kill them every time I bring them home. <laughs> I try so hard and it's I water them. be more patient. I know, right? I water them like, grow, please! It is a metaphor for my business, isn't it? Love and patience. Just styling girl, stick with what you're yeah. You're not trying to be a gardener. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so do what you love. But I would love to employ a gardener and spread the love, you know, as I build my own personal garden in my home one day. So. All right, last question yes. for you, spreading the love. We're able to spread the love a lot socially in these mm -hmm. day and age. Yeah. So, you know, social media plays such a vital role mm -hmm. in businesses. And more than likely, people are, like, social media savvy, but... Specifically, aside from meeting me, how has social media impacted your business and changed your business? Sure. Um, social media is uh, it's amazing because I started my business just as Twitter like started picking up and it was I actually just got a notice saying that I've been on Twitter five years as of two days ago. Wow. Five, 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 years, five years anniversaries. Um, so uh, why social media has uh, 
such a huge impact for my business is that it gives me this platform to express my unique vision of style and expression and self-expression to everybody like I now have a platform I, I don't get to just tell people on the street and tell friends and and tell people in networking groups one-on-one -on -one. I can put it out there and people are hearing it all over the country all over the world right? Right. and it's a really amazing thing so while I can style someone in their closets physically in Los Angeles I also am able to speak to someone in Florida in DC in Washington Washington Northern, in Washington State, there we go, in Washington, D.C., um, two different places. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm from Northern Virginia, for those of you that have been oh, you are? along. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, to be able to uh, reach all those women and give them this message that, you know, it, it really can, you're watching, you, I feel like I'm watching the message that I'm giving change their lives. And even if it's like one little style tip that made them think differently that morning, that's just enough to like change their day and make them feel better. So, I mean, my big goal is to have a empowered world and have women be so empowered that we are confident that we don't have this crazy human condition that we are self-doubting and not loving our bodies, but to be as powerful as we possibly can. and the social media lets me give that to everybody and they're listening. So it, that to me is the best when they, when I know that they're listening and making those little changes and it's changing their world. So I love that. I love it. So don't ever underestimate maybe the power of a tweet. Cause like mm -hmm. I said before, that's how we connected, mm -hmm. you know, YouTube videos, yep. Pinterest posts. We've been hearing a lot about how people are finding outfit inspiration from Pinterest. Oh yeah. Every little thing that you can do socially goes a long way. So that's going to be a great segue for us to keep up with you socially. Give us one last little plug where we can find oh, you yeah. on Twitter, Instagram, and all that. So every I am everything Lori B. Style. So you can L A U R I E B S T Y L A. Um, it has like a nice little ring to it. Um, so Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at Lori B. Style. That's me. And my website is LoriBStyle.com. My blog is on there. I have tips for women. And a couple things for men in there too. If your your man needs a style update, you can call me for that too. <laughs> yeah, men need men it too. Men definitely need it, need it. They are all so insecure, but you know they don't want to show it. Um, yeah. So there's everything about helping you know what's best for your wardrobe, what to buy now, how to work with your body type, and how to feel confident in your skin today. Well, and we you know we feel confident in our skin today, so we're gonna do one yes. last little shake and shimmy. And on that note, Lori, thank you so <laughs> thank much you. for sharing your advice today, and we'll catch you next time. Bye.